the last time we left off last week, the Kings were headed on a six game road trip uh, all on the East Coast. And three games later, me and John made a couple predictions. Uh, they're at one and two. Uh, I personally said at the end of the six games, the Kings would be sitting at three and three. Um, and, you know, it's still kind of looking that way. But, John, what do you remember what your prediction was? Um, I want to say it was four and two. Oh, I'm just man. calling you out. Yeah, I, I think, think it was. I think, well, I mean, I said it there. I kind of was predicting that they were going to win. I was making the bold prediction, although I wasn't ballsy enough to actually say it. I made the bold prediction in a way, you know, implicitly that they could, that, that they would beat Milwaukee. And that, that did not happen. <laughs> and I also, but I said explicitly that they would go to Cleveland and lose because I thought that you go to a team's house after you beat them on their home floor and they're a really good team as well. I thought they would have done what Milwaukee did to you or something, but it was the other way around. And I kind of also said that they were going to beat the Knicks. I think I said. I you must just have, like wrong, huh? Oh, yeah, I was three. wrong on I was wrong on every game. <laughs> I'm like, they can go and beat the Knicks. Everybody was telling me I was I wrong mean, on that one, though. That they <laughs> would beat the like, Knicks? A lot of people were saying the Knicks are going to beat them. Really? A lot of, a lot of people were just like, oh, I, just from what I said, I guess I shouldn't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't talk to like a bunch of Kings fans in my daily life. But, uh, um. Like on Twitter, I feel like I saw a good amount of people that are like, "Yeah, I don't know. The Knicks are playing well. I think the Knicks might win." You know? And, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think just looking at their last couple of games, I think the Knicks were playing really good basketball. So people were kind of pointing to that. But yeah. I thought they could go there, and that was definitely the second most winnable game, right? I mean, yeah. oh yeah. That, I mean, so, other than the Pistons game, like that's <laughs> that was the other game you win for sure, or you know, yeah. like you said, it's the second easiest game. Yeah, but based on the last three games that they played, um, they 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 really looked like out of character offensively. They've they've aside from the fourth quarter against the Cavs when they were went on the nineteen and uh nineteen and nothing run. Um, they they their offensive flow has looked choppy. It's never really gained a sustainable stretch where i mean it it has at times but it it, especially i guess maybe i'm thinking mostly of the Knicks game but even the the bucks game mike brown was saying that milwaukee controlled and dictated everything and that's how it felt and yeah the cleveland game was a lot like closer it was like kind of just it felt like it was just going to go down to the to the last few possessions and then the kings just like i said turn it on but for the most part, the Kings have not looked like, you know, a top offense uh, in the league. And I think that their offensive rating is, it's not even in the top five right now. So, you know, it's been interesting kind of just looking at the last 10, um, their defense has stayed, you know, their defensive rating on the year is 12, uh, 112. And, uh, in their last 10, it's 107.9. But in these last three, you know, it's still pretty decent. But, you know, 112.1 over these last three. So even on that end, it hasn't been that great. Just looking at these previous three games in particular. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, th- I it's got to be like the absence of Fox being on the East mm-hmm. Coast. And also, I do, especially with the offensive struggles, um, and Fox goes into it a the absence of Fox goes into it a lot and the injury to him both ways. But I mean, the way Milwaukee and New York and even Cleveland to a certain extent, just shut down the Kings ability to facilitate 20 assists per game over the last three. Um, that's the Kings win when they, you know, have a high assist percentage and it was just so low and ridiculous and uh, tells a whole story of the choppy flow. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying now. Um, yeah, the offense has kind of like, yeah, like the defense has been, <laughs> you know, figuring them out a little. The, the, like that Bucks game for sure. Like, Kings had a, they needed to have an up tempo, fast game against the Milwaukee, who likes to play it slow. And 
yeah, the, the Milwaukee totally dictated that pace the whole game. Uh, the Bucks kept it slow, and you know, like you got to run against the Bucks if you want to beat them. And Cleveland game, it just like you said, just their ability to facilitate. Same with the Knicks game. I think so Sabonis only had like three assists uh, against the Knicks the other night, so I, that's kind of telling. You kind of want them to see him in like the five and six, and I don't know, like they definitely have to figure it out. And like you said, it, it Fox is out. So I, I mean, it's a big, that's a big piece of your offense right there. And I was always kind of surprised they won that Cleveland game, but then that East coast road trip, that's tough too. I, I don't know. It's they, they do need to get, you know, the offense is the bread and butter of the team. They're good at, they, they've been improving on defense lately, but if they want to win games, that offense has to be going for sure. And, yeah, it just it just hasn't these last three games, and I don't have too like hard analytical evidence or you know analysis about this, but it it doesn't it hasn't looked as good as it has throughout the year. So I can see why they dropped you know the last couple of games, and they're just lucky they went on a nineteen zero run to in the game against Cleveland because I thought they were going to lose that game, but and I guess they pulled it together when it matters, but. They're they're not going to win a lot of games the way their offense has been playing these last three games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I keep pointing to the assists and opponent offensive rebounds. I mean, like for the Kings were averaging twenty eight, uh, a little more over twenty eight assists a game in November, and <laughs> if you don't get up towards that number, like the Kings were playing good basketball, um, because that was a huge component of it. So if you're not getting up to that, I mean, I don't know. But that, again, credit to the defense. I mean, of the uh, Knicks and the and the um, Bucks, but also it's like not just on this road trip, but you know, Sacramento is allowing eleven point four offensive rebounds over their last ten and twelve point eight in their last five. And I was watching some of the. Uh, the uh, clips of the offensive rebounds they allowed in Milwaukee and New York. And, you know, a few of them, it's just like, so a lot of them are like Sabone is battling with somebody or a long rebound. uh, It's kind of a 50, 50 ball that just maybe that's not going the Kings way right now. Um, But there are a few times where it's just like, there's a mix of different guys just kind of missing out on a box out opportunity. Um, you know, I feel like a few times kind of looking through it, you see kind of like Monk, Metu, maybe a guy like Akpala, Fox, but he's maybe, I don't know if the foot injury has anything to do with that. You don't want to box out a big guy when he's coming at you. Um, or maybe you can't necessarily, but it just feels like it maybe this is a little conjecture, but f- from what I feel like, it just feels like some, some of the, the, fundamentals that produce doing the little things as they say like i think the screws just need to be a little tightened there um and it's probably just loosening a little bit more because of this road trip but you know it'll be important for a team that wants to compete as it were um to kind of bear down and be able to to maybe win a game in philadelphia but they got to be able to dictate the pace again. I mean, this is another team that when you look at these last couple of games and even stretch it back, but these last three in particular, like this is a team that plays kind of a similar game in a way. So getting away from what they've been doing over these last three is really important. Um, and I guess you can just wonder how much Fox will have to do with it. I guess it just depends how healthy Fox is. Mm-hmm. And going back to that offensive rebounding uh, or just the rebounding in general uh, about how the Kings have had trouble limiting offensive rebounds. And, um, you know, it, it's very important to limit second chance points. And it's something that I noticed uh, a lot is though it's like those long, those long rebounds that aren't at the rim. I feel like the Kings lose a lot of those rebounds. I think it just, 
you know, maybe the maybe the guards or the guys on the perimeter are trying to get out and break out quick, but yeah, it's nothing more frustrating watching one of those long rebounds just go right to like the guy who shot it or just another guy at the three point line. It's like you let in a guy at the at the perimeter grab that board. So I don't know, and it could be a pace thing, right? I mean, like the Kings have a high pace. Maybe they're just like, all right, get the rebound and run. But if it's becoming that big of an issue, maybe you just need to keep your guys back and secure the possession. So that's just something I've kind of noticed with the offensive rebound, offensive rebounding predicament. At the moment that's that's true. It's just whether it's just the long rebound off a of three or like. <laughs> I feel like Hartenstein on the Knicks got a couple of bad outs and, um, and Mitchell Robinson too. Uh, and those, it's the same thing. Those just land in, in, in the Knicks lap. But it's just like, well, if you secure those rebounds somehow, um, I don't know. I, I think you're right, though. It probably has to do with uh, them wanting to push it all the time, which is good, but you know, if teams are going to adjust on you in that aspect, kind of make an adjustment and another, um, it'd be interesting to see what happens, uh, in that regard. Um, luckily I'm not a coach, so I don't have to figure that out, but yeah, I don't know. They, I, I, again, I, I think it kind of makes you wonder, um, how, how much more helpful healthy Fox would be and all that. You know, mm-hmm. because yeah. even if Fox is in a position to be getting long rebounds, to be in that kind of like mid-range area to get a long rebound, I mean, he gets that in the team could have, you know, two or three defenders on their way back and he could beat them all there. Yeah, <laughs> very. And so, Fox is a, he's a good rebounder, too. 